The 2018 Porsche Cayenne Porsche has ushered in a third generation of the Porsche Cayenne, but before you get too excited, you should be aware of the fact that it looks quite a bit lot its predecessor. Now, this isn't because Porsche was lazy. No. This is because the Cayenne went through an extensive update just back in 2015, so after three years it was time to make some changes while leaving the relatively fresh body intact with just little extras here and there. As such Porsche focused its energy on what happens beneath the skin bringing updated or new technology that includes rear axle steering as standard equipment, a three-chamber suspension, 48-volt electronic roll stabilization, and two new engines that offer up more power and better economy. At the skin level, we see a revised interior and exterior that is really more of a honing to the previous layout than an update, but it's exactly what the Cayenne needed to take its respective segment by storm in 2018. For now, there are only two trim levels available, the base level Cayenne and the Cayenne S. Like the second gen model, it will likely take a couple of years, but Porsche should fill the lineup with a diesel and a plug-in hybrid variant at some point. There's also the potential for an all-electric model at some point in this generation if Porsche really gets froggy, but we'll leave that speculation for another time. For now, let's take a good look in the new Cayenne and talk about all of the exciting changes that will carry it into the next decade. Official Video Exterior The grille and side air intakes have been enlarged just a bit. When it comes to the exterior, you can't be blamed if you take one look and say, big deal, nothing interesting here. In fact, unless you're really paying attention, you wouldn't even be wrong, but there are some changes between this generation and the last that are quite important. First off, the grille and side air intakes have been enlarged just a bit. To add to the effect, the top louver actually extends across the width of the grille from those vents, creating a one-piece type of look. The headlights are about the same but come to a sharper point on the inside corner while the hood now features sharper body lines that have been moved more center compared to before. Down below, the fog lamp mounting holes are actually a bit wider, while the air dam has expanded a bit. Thanks to new cladding in the front, the Cayenne doesn't have that non-premium underplate exposed. There are even fewer changes with the upper body line making a slightly more dominating presence and the lower body line sitting just a bit higher on the doors. As far as the side profile goes, there are even fewer changes with the upper body line making a slightly more dominating presence and the lower body line sitting just a bit higher on the doors. The wheel arches get the same definition as before while the rear C-pillar has been tilted forward ever so slightly to provide a different look in the rear and make for slightly smaller rear quarter glass in the back door. The rest of the side profile remains the same, but the side view mirrors are now just a bit shorter from top to bottom and a bit wider, giving the Cayenne less of a Dumbo look. The rear overhang on the hatch is titled slightly more upward at the end thanks to the revised C-pillar, while the Porsche revamped the overhang above the license plate to make it more dominate and the license plate just a little more recessed into the hatch. The rear of the Cayenne see the most visual changes on the outside, and that includes taillights that aren't only sleeker but more modern as well. Featuring a smaller footprint in the rear corners, they take on a tinted appearance with the turn signals and reverse lights featuring clear lenses for a unique look. The blend in with a clear insert on the rear hatch that connects the two together for good uniformity. The rear overhang on the hatch is titled slightly more upward at the end thanks to the revised C-pillar, while the Porsche revamped the overhang above the license plate to make it more dominate and the license plate just a little more recessed into the hatch. The rear fascia itself is pretty much the same, but the cladding down below changes a bit, with thinner reflectors in the corners and round exhaust outlets that sit lower and, as such, don't have the fascia wrapping around them. In between, sits a new piece of cladding with a few flicks on it to create a simulated diffuser. Thanks to the positioning of the body, you can't see the skid plate under the rear fascia either, making the Cayenne look just a little less cheap than before. Now, it is important to note that if you pull up next to a second-gen Cayenne, you'll find that it's just a hair shorter than your third-gen model. This is because Porsche extended the body's length by 63mm or 2.48 inches for those of us on this side of the pond. Despite this, the wheelbase and width remains unchanged at 117.51 and 78.07 inches, respectively, while the roof actually sits 0.35 inches lower at 66.77 inches. 
Track width is 66.14 inches in the front and 65.86 inches in the rear. All told the longer and slightly lower stance should, in combination with the rear axle steering and three-chamber suspension, make for more stable handling in the corners. Interior The interior could easily pass as a facelift to the untrained eye or occasional onlooker. Much like the exterior, the interior could easily pass as a facelift to the untrained eye or occasional onlooker. And, you can't be blamed as there are a lot of the same styling cues from the second generation here, but they have been tweaked just a little bit. Starting out with these things first, take a look at the corner HVAC vents. They are nearly the same shape, but now feature a flat edge on top and now sit a little deeper in the dash, making for thinner surrounding rings. An important point to note here is that the also it just a little further to the outside than before. Thanks to the thinner door skins, the dash is actually a bit wider, not by much, but it is there. The handles on the door trim and on the center console are nearly identical, and are even angled the same, but have been moved further back on the door time and further forward on the console. The vents on top of the dash are still in place but now sit flat in the dash instead of bubbling upward on either side of that analog clock. And, even though, you don't see it in the picture here, that clock is available as an option and is less obtrusive thanks to the dash being angled further forward and sitting just a bit lower. As far as new stuff goes, there's actually more than you might realize at a glance. First, the passenger side of the dash look s a lot cleaner thanks to better airbag placement and blending. A 12.3-inch display adorns the center stack and is wider than the center console. This means that Porsche had to do something with the rearward-facing center vents, so those have been placed below the screen in the area that used to house the audio controls for the display in the second-gen model. Now, one of the biggest problems with the second-gen Cayenne was that clustered mess that was the center console. It was packed full of analog buttons and wood trim and was hideously long. That is now a thing of the past as Porsche has decided to go with a glass insert here that makes way for a number of touch buttons. All told, the number of analog buttons in the cabin has decreased by at least half, and that portion of the console is now shorter than before making the cup holders easier to reach. Finally, the instrument cluster has been upgraded to an almost all-digital design, with the exception of the single analog gauge in the center. Porsche hasn't released anything in the way of interior dimensions aside from that of cargo storage figures which now come up to 770 liters or 27.19 cubic feet. With all of that said, Porsche hasn't released anything in the way of interior dimensions aside from that of cargo storage figures which now come up to 770 liters or 27.19 cubic feet. That's an increase of just over 3.5 cubic feet, which isn't much but can be attributed to the slightly longer body and good use of those extra inches. With this in mind, it's likely that all other interior dimensions remained about the same. Headroom could drop a bit, especially in the rear thanks to the lower roof height and more angled C-pillar, but legroom and shoulder room should be the same. Front hip room could have increased marginally thanks to the thinner door trim panels, but at this point, that's just speculation. Drivetrain We still haven't received word about a Cayenne Turbo, quite yet, but both the base Cayenne and the Cayenne S will come with new engines, at least for this lineup, anyway. When I first speculated about the third-gen Cayenne, I figured that the same powertrains would carry over considering the extensive update that took place for 2015. Boy, I couldn't have been more wrong. The 3.6-liter V6 and the 4.8-liter V8 are both a thing of the past at this point. Of course, we still haven't received word about a Cayenne Turbo, quite yet, but both the base Cayenne and the Cayenne S will come with new engines, at least for this lineup, anyway. The base model gets a 3.0-liter, turbocharged, V6 that delivers 340 horsepower at 5,300 revolutions per minute and 331 pound-feet of torque at an impressively low 1,340 revolutions per minute. The Cayenne S, on the other hand, gets a big more go juice, thanks to the 2.9-liter, biturbo, V6 that pumps out 440 ponies at 5,700 revolutions per minute and 405 pound-feet at 1,800 revolutions per minute. Shifting duties are handled by an 8-speed automatic. Before I go deeper into the performance figures for these engines, I want to point out one thing. 
while they have been made smaller in comparison to the offerings in the second gen, they are actually more powerful and should ultimately be more responsive. In the end, the 3.0 liter delivers an extra 40 horsepower over its predecessor, while the 2.9 liter in the Cayenne S is good for an extra 20 ponies, which isn't bad. When you factor in the weight loss of 65 kilos or 143.3 pounds thanks to that all-aluminum body, it shouldn't be a surprise that the new Cayenne can make the 60 mph sprint in 5.8 seconds or 4.9 seconds in S trim. Add on the Sport Plus package, and you'll get there in 5.6 and 4.6 seconds, respectively. Top speed for the base Cayenne is set to 152 miles per hour while the S can make it all the way to 164 miles per hour if you're really brave enough to push an SUV that hard. Of course, thanks to things like rear axle steering as standard equipment to go with optional goodies like the three-chamber air suspension and 48-volt electronic roll stabilization, you don't exactly need balls of steel to be a little spirited on a curvy road on Sunday morning. On a side note, the Cayenne also rolls on mixed tires that start out at 19 inches and can be optioned as large as 21 inches. Braking duties can be handled by an all-new, but optional braking system known as Porsche Surface Coated Brakes, which have a tungsten carbide layer that is supposed to increase friction for better stopping while cutting back on wear and brake dust production. The PSCB is available only when the Cayenne is equipped with 20 or 21-inch wheels, but if you want the absolute best, you still need to go for the PCCB ceramic brakes. Some remaining speculation. Yes, it is true the Porsche has spilled the beans, but it didn't dump out the whole can. Nope. It pulled out the old plastic wrap and saved some for later. See, with the second gen Cayenne it took a while, but there was eventually a turbo, a hybrid, and a diesel thrown into the lineup too. Now, considering that Porsche has revamped the powertrain offerings for the base and S trims, there's no telling what it will do for the remaining models. I have a feeling the turbo will use some form of the old V8 or at the very least an upgraded version of that 2.9 liter V6. The hybrid could make use of the 3.0 liter with a supercharger as it did before, but I would put my money on a bigger battery pack and even a more powerful electric motor. As for the diesel, there's no telling what will happen, but I would expect an increase in horsepower and torque output to go with better emissions and economy as well. For now, we'll just have to wait, but it should only be a year or two at the most before the third gen Cayenne lineup is complete. Until then, the Cayenne S seems like a good starting point, though, doesn't it? 2019 Porsche Cayenne Safety Features Prices As far as pricing in the US goes, we still have a bit to wait, but Porsche has already opened the order books for the new, 3rd gen Cayenne over in Germany and you're going to have to pony up at least €74,828 for the base model or €91,964 for the Cayenne S, including VAT. That computes to $89,028 and $109,416 at current exchange rates, respectively. Of course, considering the current, second-gen Cayenne goes for $60,600 or $77,400 for the S, we can't really use German prices to guesstimate, but expect to see pricing in the US go up by a few thousand at least, making the base model carry an MSRP closer to $63,000 and the S closer to $80,000. But hey, you get more power and a refined look, so you can't complain too much, right? Competitors BMW X5 The Cayenne's main competitor is the BMW X5. It is equal in size, offers similar cargo room, and is equal on the luxury front. The X5 should see its own generational update by 2018, but until then we have to look at the current lineup. There are five trims to speak of here in the US, ranging from the base level S Drive 35i to the range topping X Drive 50i. The base model and the X-Drive 35i are both powered by a 3.0-liter V6 that produces 300 horsepower. The 60 mph sprint on these models takes just 6.1 seconds. Moving up to the X-Drive 35d gets you a 3.0-liter diesel that produces 255 horsepower and can hit 60 miles per hour in 6.5 seconds. The X-Drive 40E is Bimmer's hybrid variant of the X5 that is powered by a 2.0-liter 4-cylinder and a lithium-ion electric motor. 
Total output of sits at 308 horsepower, and the sprint to 60 miles per hour takes 6.5 seconds. The range topping X Drive 50i comes with a 4.4 liter V8 that produces 445 horsepower. It takes just 4.7 seconds to hit 60 miles per hour with this baby. The X5 starts out at $54,700 for the base model and climbs to $71,500 for the X Drive 50i. Pricing should remain about the same when the next generation debuts. Read our speculative review on the BMW X5. Mercedes GLS. It wouldn't be a proper review if we didn't put Porsche, BMW, and Mercedes against each other, so I've done just that. If the name seems a little off, that's because what I'm really talking about is the Mercedes GLS UV, but for 2016 Mercedes is updating the name so that it fits within the new naming structure. Naturally, the GLS boasts similar cargo room and luxury compared to the Cayenne and comes in several different flavors. There is a total of four drivetrain options, starting with the 3.0-liter V6 found in the GLS 450. It pumps out 362 horsepower and 369 pound-feet. The GLS 554 Modic has a V8 that puts down 455 horsepower and 516 pound-feet, which is a 20 horsepower improvement over last year's model. The third gasoline-powered option comes in the Mercedes AMG GLS 63 that delivers 577 horsepower and 561 pound-feet from its V8. As you would expect there is also a diesel variant, known as the GLS 350D. It has a 3.0-liter V6 that delivers 255 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque. In current form, the GLS starts out at $64,550 for the entry-level model, with the range topping Mercedes-AMG GLS 63 commanding $121,100 significantly cheaper than the Cayenne in range topping form. Read our full review on the Mercedes GLS. Conclusion from a certain perspective, it doesn't look new at all, but when you go over things in detail, there's actually a lot of newness to be discovered. I must admit that it's pretty easy to be sad when taking a first glance at the new Cayenne. From a certain perspective, it doesn't look new at all, but when you go over things in detail, there's actually a lot of newness to be discovered. And, you can't fault Porsche for not changing up the exterior profile too much. After all, it did an extensive update to the second gen just a couple of years ago that gave us the current look. This time around, it was all about what really matters, weight, power output, chassis refinement, and technology. Exactly the things that needed improvement from the second gen model and exactly what you'll get when you decide to upgrade to a third gen model. On top of that, Porsche took things a step further and ditched most of the analog buttons and brought more digitalization into even the base model Cayenne. BMW and Mercedes better take note because Porsche isn't playing around. What do all of you think about the third gen Cayenne? Are you happy with the engine and technology updates or were you hoping for a new look as well? Let us know in the comments section below. Love it new, lighter platform refined exterior lighting new technology. Leave it not a lot of exterior change the third gen Cayenne is here. While we're busy at work revamping this review, we've put together a short article to discuss all of the important aspects of the new Cayenne. Check it out in our article, The Third Gen Porsche Cayenne Makes a Symphonious Debut in Stuttgart 2018 Porsche Cayenne Official Photos Spy Shots August 2, 2017 2018 Porsche Cayenne gets ready to make its long-awaited debut. There really isn't a whole lot to mention here. The Cayenne has been rocking production headlights and taillights for a while now. Porsche still has tape along the outside edges of the taillights, though so we still can't make out the full matrix layout, but the rear of this model is sporting a quad exhaust layout with four square tips as opposed to the dual rectangular tips on the last mule or the quad round tips on the one before that. Everything else in the rear and along the side is as it has been, but the white finish does make it easier to see some of the body lines, and one has to admit, it's pretty attractive. Compared to the last two models we've seen, there's also a small change up front, that goes back to the black model we say testing back in May of 2016. 
That model was one that sported a quad exhaust layout with round pipes, but it also had a different grille setup up front, just like the one we're seeing today. Basically, the difference is that the grille up front is completely different. When the last model had those big vents just below the headlights too, they were separated by a part of the fascia. The top louver of those vents extended over to the grille. On this mule, the grille is actually wider, and those vents have a big insert surrounding them. It looks a bit cheaper than on the last mule, but it could turn out to be more attractive in the long run. The grille itself has the same number of vertical louvers, but there are only two horizontal louvers. The vents also get an eyelet of sorts at the top without the vertical insert on the outside edges, while there's also only one horizontal louver in the middle. This should contribute to more airflow, indicating that this mule is more of a higher performance version. On a side note, Porsche also decided to tape over the hood emblem, despite it being exposed on the last mule, so there's that. So, what do you think? Do you like the look of the last mule better or this one? Let us know in the comments section below. July 14, 2017 2018 Porsche Cayenne caught wearing basically no camouflage. July 11, 2016 2018 Porsche Cayenne testing in Spain. May 20, 2016 2018 Porsche Cayenne reveals its interior. March 11, 2016 first testing session. Updated history. Update the 2nd of August 2017, the next gen Porsche Cayenne was caught out in the wild yet again, this time wearing a pretty white finish. Not a whole lot has changed, considering that last mule we saw had already shed most of its camo, but there are a couple of obscure differences to point out. So, join me in the spy shot section below to see what's poppin'. Updated July 14, 2017, our spy photographers caught a pre-production Cayenne wearing basically no camouflage except for some camo foil on the lights. Updated the 11th of July 2016, our spy photographers caught the upcoming Porsche Cayenne out for a new testing session, this time during some hot weather conditions in sunny Spain. Update May 20th 2016, the next generation Cayenne has been caught testing in the wild again. This time, it sheds the fake taillights, and we get a look at the interior. Check out the review below for all the details. If you liked this video, please share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.